She's back. He yes, accepts me here. for the human that I am, mm. and we want to love each other there. And she won't go away. She, she won't, won't go, go away. away. It's like the Undertaker's. This whole journey has just brought Will and I closer in such an authentic oh, way. I mean, this we're... journey of me trashing you, emasculating you, telling everybody all our business, somehow it brought us all closer. Remember what we said was going to happen, right? Change the narrative. Got to change. No accountability. It's changed the narrative. Where's the red eyes, the teared up? She's a whole nother... She's a different chick. Specifically yeah. women and feeling like we're going to be criticized. Yeah. We're going to be can't say anything. judged. You can't yeah. say anything. Yeah. This is not about you being a woman. This is about you being crazy and cruel. Nobody. It's She should have said, you know, as a garbage person. Mm. As a you know. garbage American, I just want to say <laughs> it's so hard to do these interviews without people judging. It's the only well, part in the special well, that I felt like got okay. lost. Well, we found <laughs> it today. We found it today. In there, man, it's a pair of ducks. I mean, are you crazy? Dressed in black? You think I don't know everything that goes with that black you're dressed in? We right, right. And are you guys divorced? Are you yeah. guys together? Your black the gloves? I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Yo, GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do to sexual revolutions being podcasted? And I am excited. Uh, first and foremost, what's up with my boy Harry? Was popping. Oh, Dante, you know me. I'm I'm leading the best life. If if I was any happier, I'd be a producer at the Today Show when Jada Pickett Smith <laughs> shows up. Cause she she's back, bro. She's showing up. Or we should say yeah. she's back. <laughs> oh my God, she is. She. This is the story that will not go away, and people will not are like. Go away. Why are you still talking? Some people are like, hey, why are you still talking about this? Why are you giving it so much energy? Because she keeps throwing gasoline on this fire and she will not let it die. And we do a relationship podcast and we cannot ignore this. This is insanity. So first of all, we talked about how she she initially was like mm. uh, her and Will have been, you know. So wait, let me, 20 small, let me make some uh, little clarity. Let's recap. She's releasing a memoir. Right. And as part of the publicity for that memoir, she She's did a, a, a one hour sit down interview special with NBC that they aired on uh, as part of a dateline, which is yes. just about her. Just is massive. Her. And also they cut those clips into t the Today Show. Right. Now that came. Check the check the check out the other the other video will be in the in the comments down. That's right. But yeah. And we, the we original a, video. We did a whole recap of that because it was fucking insane bonkers. Right. Uh, in that video, of course, she uh, <laughs> suggests that her and Will Smith have been apart since 2016. They've been leading separate right. lives. Yeah. That, uh, which that's every, a quote. That's a quote from home. It's yeah. Yeah. Uh, separate lives since 2016. So she was astonished that Will would even refer to her as his wife. And right. so basically she was just kind of like wiping her hands of it like she has nothing to do with this and which is been... interesting which is interesting because the red talk table uh where she talked about where how are you what was it uh horrible bad marriage, marriage bad, bad marriage, marriage for, for life for life right yeah and so we... that was done in 2021 20, no, 2020 or 2021 okay. well within so... that time frame yeah, that yeah. gives a little little time gap there. In addition, and there's another video where she's harassing Will. I guess like she was trying to get some get to some guest without asking him, and he yeah, gets annoyed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's also in like 2021. That was also, also in a, in our other video, so you can check that out. It's yeah, the, you know the one we so, did, the original one. She does this interview. We recapped it. A lot of people recapped it because it's it's nuts. Uh, it goes viral in uh, the the worst way, which is everyone with basically the same take going. This woman is out of her mind. Yeah, she is crazy, uh, and this is unhealthy. And poor Will Smith. So uh, what happened was obviously this blows up, which is not the publicity she wanted. Right, because she figured everybody was going to be so riveted about wanting to know the struggles that she was going through. Sure. So she could get the sympathy that she needed, and more importantly. The book sales. But I think what happened is I, I, in my opinion, we'll probably find this out later. I don't know if we'll do another follow up because I'm, we I'm might have about, to if she keeps showing up at places because she keeps and she won't go away. She, she won't, won't go, go away. away. And it's just like the undertaker is just like, boom, and she sits <laughs> up again. You're like, what are you thinking? 
back on NBC, the Today Show, she basically right. demanded to go back on. Let's call right. it what it is. She wanted to come back on to yeah. clarify something, and they took her back on because, I mean, it, that segment blew up. It might have been the most popular thing they've done right, all right, year. Right. So they're like, yeah, bring this crazy lunatic back on. Yeah. And she begins to, what did we say was going to happen, Dante, on the uh, last one? Remember what we said was going to happen? It we said... Yeah, go ahead. You gotta change the narrative, right? Change the narrative. Gotta change. No accountability. It's change the narrative. Soon as she gets to a point where where people stop buying into it, she's going to. It's going to change the thing. She comes back on. No tears. You know what? I'm not even going to say nothing. Let's go to the video. So after we had our long sit down, this is stuff you've been carrying. Hold on. I think she looked. Is it me or does she look like Cisco from the thong song? (laughs) All right. So they're sitting down now. Uh, with uh, Hoda, who did the original interview here. Carrying with you for many, many, many years, and it's out there. Yeah. So as we sit here today in a reflection of was it the right thing to reveal, to talk about everything, do you feel like you made the right choice? Absolutely. I think you, mm-hmm. at some point, you know, I had to talk about my journey, mm-hmm. you know. And um, I think just like we were talking about, I think there's so many of us who, you know, hold so much, Mm -hmm. you know, specifically women and feeling like we're going to be criticized. We're going to be judged. You can't say anything. And the beautiful part about it is like the whole this whole journey, as difficult as it's been, has just brought Will and I closer in such an authentic oh, way. Cut it, cut it, cut it. You okay. know, cut it, instead cut it, of trying to. <laughs> Hold on. Are you. This I mean, we're... journey of me trashing you, emasculating you, telling everybody all our business, somehow it brought us all closer. It's just, I just feel like now we understand each other. What's interesting is, where's the red eyes, the teared up? She's a whole. Another bitch. She's a different chick. This is a whole different chick altogether. Mm. Smiles. Hey, great to see you. You know what? I, now that I got it out, all of my mental illness, mm-hmm. done. I'm great now. I feel great. I, fe- I feel great. Well, you. no one said that you're not going to feel great. Will Smith is the one who's not feeling great because also, by the way, our journey has brought us closer together. Yeah. You, during that last interview, you said you guys were living completely separate lives. Yes. And, and now, have been since 2016. And now the journey is that brought you closer together. This is what we mean by just changing the narrative because yeah. it was such, she got such backlash. Now she's rewriting history, which is something that toxic women do is they rewrite it to their benefit. Yeah. Uh, let's, uh, let's go to, oh, uh, oh, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. That, that's, that's, that's the <laughs> yeah, that's not I, Jada Pinkett. That's uh, Cisco from the Thong Song. I apologize. They got, they got the same bra size, though. That's yeah. good, though. I mean, yeah, there we go. Um, Sorry about that, guys. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say something. I'm not gonna. Uh, I don't want to say this. Uh, I don't know if anybody would think this, but Cisco, more feminine, more feminine. Oh wow. <laughs> okay. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, thonk to thonk thonk thonk. Here we go. It's like just tearing all sides. Yeah. You're gonna be can't say anything. Judge, you can't yeah. say anything. Yeah. And the beautiful part about it is like the whole this whole journey. Hold on. I just want to say something. You she now here's another t- side road. And we're going to stop this multiple times because you can't go a couple seconds without some insanity that you have to break down. <laughs> right. Right. The uh, uh, women can't say this and women can't say that they're beat without being judged. Right. No, this is not about you being a woman. No. Ada. This is about you being crazy and cruel. <clears throat> like, don't try to Susan B. Anthony your way out of this where you're you're burning your bras as a as a unity thing like even the women are not behind this is insane like who nobody is behind her on this no nobody it's she should have said you know as a ch- garbage person mm, yeah. i feel like now that i've crapped on everybody around yeah. i've lied about anything i just feel so much more purged <laughs> i just feel open to live my life in in its greatest light now as a garbage American, I just want to say it's so hard to do these interviews without people judging. Oh, my God. One thing people were really still concerned about or confused about right. really was, OK, hang on. They've been divorced 
in theory, but not on paper. Yes. They've been, yes. they were not together, together but, but kind of pretended they were together. So I had trouble articulating right. exactly why that was. So now that you've had more time, right. why was that? Now, now that you've been trashed relentlessly, is there a, <laughs> now that why? people- Why? Oh. Instead of holding going, so just curious, why was you lying? Yeah. Why was you lying, bitch? Stop lying. Tell well, the truth. I got it. Here's the difficult job Hoda has, right? She's got to wrangle this maniac. So she has to like do or a couple. She can hold, or she can hold her accountable. How about that? She could. You you came on here and you lied. Mm. You said this. None of it was consistent. You're going to you. Are you planning on telling the truth now or what? Mm. How You're about right. That? You're right. I think she's playing the the long game here. But uh, listen. I'm not here to blame Hoda. She, to me, she's a part of this, but uh, Jada is the one who is out of her mind. Needed time to get solidified yeah. because at the end of the day, Will and I love each other. You know, well, we had what? to really figure out what we, <laughs> what wanted we wanted before we went into the world to say what was going on because we were in such, mm. you know. You, you, was it? Hold on. You couldn't say that during the hour now, interview? That you now, let, let, let me say this. Will ain't said shit. Mm. The only thing that Will went on record was his slap apology, right? Mm. And there's a video where we show before where he goes, I give up. Go find your happiness. And because uh, I can't, I lose. I, I, I cannot find your happiness. You need to find your happiness to prove to me that it could happen. So and she's like, and, you know, I love him now. I mean, after I've given all my love to dead Tupac. Right. Mm. Whatever's left is all wills. Mm. So he should be I, happy about and that. And again, none of this was said during that initial Nothing. interview that she did. Nothing. None of that. And by the way, just so, again, another thing, the background, having both of us having worked in, in show business, in production and on camera, when somebody does a one hour interview, that means they did about two to three hours of interviews right. that they a cut A lot down. of it ended up on the on the yeah. cutting room floor. And, and she did two parts, one in her hometown where she's walking around, a sit down interview. That's between four and six hours worth of footage. And at no point in that was any of this love for Will mentioned at all. Yeah, not once. That, that, I, it, that, she said that at all. I don't think she said she loved him at all in the no. hour or she, the seven hour interview that yeah. she did. She completely separated herself from him and then acted like everyone else was crazy for thinking that they were a couple. When you've been with someone for more than half your life, he wrote, a sort of an emotional blindness sets in and all you can do uh, and you can all too easily lose your sensitivity to their hidden nuances and subtle beauties. Did wow. This this sounds like a hostage note, by the way. Um, <laughs> well, but let's first be and honest. Foremost. We, we both counsel dudes who would, you know, before we counseled them, would take back somebody who has been abusive and and mm -hmm. uh, uh, unavailable emotionally and mean and selfish and ungrateful. We have on both sides, men and women, where when you are the abused, right? It's it's Stockholm syndrome. You still in love with what what you perceive is the ultimate person that you're that you're thinking about. So you're not really looking at you're not really looking at what is, right? Mm -hmm. You're looking at the potential of what it be. I always say this, I say when you buy a house, the house is appraised. You pay for what you pay for the house is what the house is appraised for at the moment, not what it's going to be uh worth in 10 years, not what it was going to be 10 years ago, not what the white lady appraiser appraised it for when you had African statues and black pictures on the wall. It, no you got to you got to you got to get the, the proper appraisal right now. And that's what you make the decision on. And if you think about that, let's just think about that for a minute. How where this relationship was when she made that interview. I, we had we were so apart. I never perceived him as as my husband. So when he said when he when he referred to me as my wife, his wife, when he went up and smacked Chris, I, I didn't. Even, I was so surprised. I didn't even know who he was talking about. Here's mm. what you do know. Without being his wife, how do your hey, listen, Cisco, you need to just put out a new album called oh, Boxes instead of instead of the thong. It'd be th the thong two 
call it boxes or boxer briefs. Oh my god! Because this, you're not gonna. Nobody's gonna touch you. You wasn't working. And let's be honest, she was a, an awesome villain in Gotham. She was an awesome cutthroat. She had villain her moment. Well, yeah, she was a great villain. Great because villain in now, life. And, and now we and, know why. <laughs> she it just was so easy. It I mean, so this easy. is just as I said, you know, to reiterate, this is just cruel in a sense. Like if you really love somebody, why continue this publicity tour? Why write the memoir to begin with? You're you're a millionaire. You don't need the money to do it. Why air this laundry and hurt somebody you have already hurt? It's because she doesn't take any accountability. You know, we're always talking about accountability. But there's no, no greater accountability than supporting us on the Patreon at patreon.com slash manschool202 helps us keep doing what we're doing. Yeah, that's right. Patreon.com slash manschool202. That's where we do all the bonus content for the show. Uh, we talk about a lot of game, a lot of technique, and we also archive all the old episodes starting from episode one. So if you love the show and you want to support the show, come on over and join us at patreon.com slash manschool202. And if you can't do that, at the very least, do us a favor, like and subscribe below and tell your friends. And do all. Do all of the above. Yeah. Peace. Let's go. And, and what's going to happen? What do you think is going to happen now, like with her reputation? For First of all, even though they love Will Smith, they love Will Smith. Even though they love Will Smith, let's be honest. Will Smith will never have the the all that he worked to to get the prestige. He, he will never have that again. But if he won't have it, where do you think that leaves Cisco? Look, she, she looked like she looked like lint on that white couch. She looks. <laughs> I mean, it's a lot of white there, and that's of, uh, just that face. Hold on, I'm gonna pull up. We're gonna share some more here. Uh, but also, the other thing that was interesting was uh, Hoda was reading the statement from Will. Will said the uh, the memoir was eye opening, meaning you've learned all this through the memoir. Yeah, like that the book came out and now you're seeing things. That's a that's a little peculiar. Yeah, that that's how you figure out aspects of your relationship what is when it's made public. Trash. She's it's, a trash human. Who does that? Yeah. Who does? That? Don't get me wrong. I you know you you know you know the rumor is that. Uh, that will smash Margot Robbie uh, and, and, and smashed a few joints. Including. But even all that was technically under yeah. an agreement where they had separated and were at the well, at who, who knows? Who knows what? Uh, who knows what the agreement is? Just so yeah. much lies. And, and, and let me just say this as much as we trash her because we feel like Will is the victim. Let's be honest. You look, if you are in and just pay listeners, listen to this. If you are in a relationship where somebody is abusive, it is absolutely their fault because they're garbage human beings mm -hmm. the first time. But the second time, understand this, that you are you are signing up for somebody being treating you and being abusive and emotionally unavailable. Mm. So you do not get to blame it on anybody after the first time. The first time you got me. For, for, you know, fool me once, uh, shame, shame on, on you. you. Fool, fool me twice. Uh, you won't get fooled again. I won't get fooled again. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, you, you know, this is definitely has to do with, and, and this is also a situation where you got to think about, and, and we haven't talked about this on the podcast for a while, how um, clearly there are anytime you are in a, an abusive situation, there's two archetypes. Those two archetypes are the abuser and the abusee, right? Mm. The people who both people are can be abusive because I've also heard I know somebody else. Shout out to Miron. Miron was telling me that he used to wait on Will and Will Will wasn't that nice a guy when you you know you you're waiting on him with you know. 30 people in the entourage and they, you know, wasn't that nice a guy at that point, but that's mm. neither here nor there. My point is you, you have these two archetypes is the abuser and the abusee, the abusers, both people are abusers or both people create this dynamic of abusive and abusee. They don't care which person they are. So like if the abusive, if, if, if Jada 
Mm -hmm. Which is interesting because if Jada found somebody who was more abusive than she was, she does. They don't mind taking the abusive position. They don't mind being the the submissive who takes the abuse. And the per and if they meet somebody who's nicer to them or, or more tolerant, then they will abuse that person. As long as both archetypes, the abuser and the abusee, is 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 fulfilling uh, a role, fulfilling yeah. those two archetypes, they don't care. They honestly don't care which one they play as long as because this is usually, you know, this comes from your, our childhood. Our childhood comes from where we come. We, we are raised by people who are abusive. Hurt right? people, hurt people. If you hurt if people, you hurt people. Yeah. And her mom, her mom absolutely was a dope fiend. She talked about how her mom was at dope fiend ways and was unavailable. And her father was, you know, unav he was unavailable. And so she has this, the mother is abusive and she's, but the mother was good to them drugs. And if you, mm -hmm. if, if, when you have, when you fulfill all both of those archetypes, what ultimately happens is that it feels like home. It feels like what you're accustomed to, because if you come from a toxic background, this is why you got to go to therapy. This is why you got to fix this stuff. I'm sorry. Eric. No, no. Can you give us the we haven't talked about this in a while and we're going to have a bunch of new people watching the brackish, the uh, brackish fish uh, metaphor to explain. Yeah, it, yeah, that'd be OK. So this is something this is something that Patrice and I were talking about. And uh, so. uh the, the way it happens is there's a there's a, a a fish in Africa called the African cichlids, and these fish are actually more aggressive than piranhas, but they don't they don't they don't attack and they don't feed in in schools. So uh, these fish are the the probably the most colorful and the prettiest freshwater fish. But if you know anything about freshwater fish and saltwater fish. You know, Caribbean saltwater fish are like like Dory and like uh what's uh Flying Nemo. Nemo. Yeah, Nemo. Nemo, those fish are so colorful. But the prettiest fish that you can find in fresh water are, are African cichlids, and they come in a lot of different colors and so on. But they're very aggressive, right? Right. Not only are they so aggressive that if you if they will always find a fish, the lower end on the totem pole, and basically just eat its fins, fins off and eat its chews, its, uh, chew its eyes out. But those fish exist in a in a in a, in a town in Africa called uh, in Tanzania, and those fish are in a lake in Tanzania, and there are tribes and stuff that, that everybody that use that water. So there's a bacteria. They shit in it. They eat in it. They you you know what I'm saying? It's a mm. it's their water source, and there is a bacteria in that in that river. Um, what happens is when you take those fish out of the wild and you put a fish tank in, the first thing you have to do you have to maintain because what it brackish means is part salt, part part fresh water. Um, and there's also a bacteria. It's a high pH less of bacteria. So if you take that fish and put it in a fresh water, just you take some fresh water and put it a clean water into your fish tank, what would happen to that fish? All of them will die. They'll all die because they need to live in the bacteria. They, they need to live in that toxicity. It's right. a funny, funny thing because uh, I remember the funny story. Patrice had this $400, 400, 400 gallon tank. And he had this Asian goo because you got to really know what you're doing because you got to maintain the the toxicity of the tank, mm -hmm. the, the the pH. And the guy uh, used to charge him like uh, forty nine dollars a month to to maintain the tank. Mm -hmm. And he Patrice didn't have the cash on him. And he said, uh, well, I need to get paid. And Patrice said, uh, he said, well, I got a, a piggy bank. Well, no, no. Here's what if I remember the story right, and correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> yeah. And Patrice always paid the guy monthly. Yeah. What happened oh, was yeah, yeah. he had been using him for years, and yeah. the guy, I think he needed like a, a five dollar, like a filter or something that was five bucks. And Patrice yes, yes, has been yes. paying this guy for years, and and it was Patrice was a little bit annoyed that you're just not just gonna throw me the filter. I've been paying you hundreds, and at this well, point, no, no, he had to pay him, but he said it, I just didn't have the money. He didn't have all the money. I didn't have any cash on him. And so the guy said, well, I'll take I'll take the change. And so Patrice counted out forty nine dollars in oh, nickels that's... and dimes. Right. <laughs> and made him cup his hand. He cupped his hands he and he counted hand. every cent until every he got cent. the money. So he got the forty nine dollars. And so uh, Patrice was like, you know, call me up. He goes, yo, uh, F that. Yo, I'm, I'm going to do it myself. Right. Mm -hmm. So Patrice. 
uh, put all his clean water in the tank, right? And I came to see him, and his tank looked like a, a painting, like an oil painting, because all the fish, if they weren't dead, they were all just standing still, right? And, oh, and the tank not because moving. They're, they're, they're sick or whatever. When they're standing still, they're not well health. And I mean, some of those fish cost them $85. Well, $85, $100, $200 a fish because they had gotten big and whatnot. And and all the most of a, a, a third of his fish died because he was treating them with he put them in an environment that was that was healthy, that was clean and healthy and non-toxic. And so when you have somebody who is a brackish person, they they need that toxicity. So when you have somebody who is accustomed to abuse and emotional abuse and gaslighting and all those terminologies we use now that we never use, mm. we just was like, you a bitch. Um, and now we have all these 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 professional terms, but it, they're accustomed to that behavior. They're accustomed, and not only that, but it, when it when it is when you are treating somebody with that kind of respect that they're not accustomed to, there's something wrong with you because there's a self hatred that you have where you go you go I know I ain't shit, and if you're treating me better than I believe I should, if you be treated, like me, I ain't shit, and if you like me. Something's that means wrong with something's you. wrong with you. Why the fuck something. would you like me? Why would you? Well, yeah. And this is not a conscious thought, but no. ultimately it's a it's a it's a subconscious thought. Let's let's get back oh, to the reality yeah. way of. And also one one thing with the brackish thing, if like you said, if that environment doesn't exist, that toxic environment with they will like create it. that chaotic, they will create that toxic environment because that's the only way they're comfortable. Yeah. And uh, here we go. More on the edge than he had realized. You can do uh, and you can all too easily lose your sensitivity to their hidden nuances and subtle beauties. Did it sounds like an emotional blindness? He didn't see you. Is that kind of what it was that he I think? Yeah, that's so universal mm. in relationships. He didn't see me and I didn't see him. Right. Yeah. And so we kind of had that's to not go universal. our separate ways to see each other. Stop. You know? Stop it. Yeah, that's that's not he universal. He saw you. He was the submissive. He saw you. He's done. He did everything he could possibly do to because he's the one that's it, once that one that's getting the business. And so it's literally like you're falling down the subway stairs. You're falling and you're trying to catch your catch your balance. But the more you try to catch your balance, the quicker you fall, the faster you fall. So he saw you and she didn't give a fuck because she was too busy loving the dead man. She was still loving the spirit of fucking of of, Tupac, of, of, Tupac, of Tupac. Shakur. And by the way, just so you know, they had a, whatever friendship they had. He would have hated you, too, eventually. Yeah, but because absolutely. he's dead, now you glorify him. It's like the Sopranos when Tony Soprano would talk about his father was dead. So his mother was like, you know, he'd be like, yeah, when he was fucking alive, he, he was a, it was a, she hated him. But now that he's right. fucking dead, he's a goddamn saint all of a sudden. <laughs> There's this mentality now that she can glorify Tupac. Wait, could and you go, do that? Could you do that in Again, because uh, do that voice. Again. Oh yeah! <laughs> now that he's fucking gone, all of a sudden he's dead. Now he's a fucking saint. <laughs> fucking Tupac. Now the fucking Tupac's gone. He's a fucking angel. You know they they yeah. That's what she's doing. She's glorifying this guy who is gone, and she is like and, and toxic women do that. They will focus on an ex or somebody else. Don't get me wrong. Toxic men will do it too. Yeah, that's if, true. Fair enough. If you if you get a hey, let's make no mistake about it. I don't want to go down. I don't want us but, to start going down to Kevin Samuels uh, where 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 you're not you're not making men accountable for this. I, if you have an abusive guy and you uh, he chases the he chase like there's a whole book out on say why do men love bitches? There's a book out called that. Uh or I wow, think it's Jesus. <laughs> Wait, are you sure you didn't men, I might, it might be it might be my it was what library do man. you go to because i don't these are not at my library i gotta maybe well, i gotta I got order to, them i gotta take you i gotta take you it's a, it's it, it's right in the it's right next to the the white man is a pig that's oh wow <laughs> all right i'm gonna write these down i gotta get right. these on amazon Devil, Hold that's on. right next to it it's not an amazon oh no oh no. okay it's black Amazon. What a black, ah, you beat me to it, motherfucker. Black Amazon. I won't go to black Amazon. It's Blamazon. <laughs> you know, you get a prime time. You get prime time. That's funny. Prime time. 
So yeah, but men, men will do that too. The, the nicest girl in the world that treat like trash. The girl that treats them like trash, they chase. They with, chase more than without they a doubt, I agree with you one hundred percent. But the double standard is this: Imagine if Will Smith kept bringing up an ex of uh, his, maybe, yeah. like over for thirty years. Imagine yeah. would that be okay? It's not. It's just a yeah. double standard where she's putting this other guy, and it's like it's just in bed. You have you have children at home. You have a husband in theory. Why would you profess this? He's my soulmate. She said yeah. Tupac was my soulmate. And I also think that women have a camaraderie with other women because they they there's so much that they've gone through in terms of their own personal abuse and in terms of you know as society has grown that they have a they have an affinity to stick up for each other. So when you when I look in the comments and sisters is smashing her like this goofy bitch, like you that's she I that's what I call the Amber Heard effect. She literally shitted on his pillow. Yeah. Like she, she, she beat this, she beat Will up so much that women was like, you know, it's it's like, look, if, if you find, if you find that Hitler is kicking puppies, you know, in your mind, you go, oh, yeah, I get it. That's, you know, it's Hitler. That's what he does. That's what he does. But at some point in time, even if you, even if you hate dogs, at some point in time, after the third kick, even somebody who hates dogs is going, yo, I, right, yo. Stop hitting the motherfucking dog. Yeah. Cut it out. Because the humanity. So I think she's been so abusive and so horrible that the human that women have even overlooked their camaraderie and their 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 malleability for, for women in, in terms of what women have gone through that they even turned against her. Which is so that's nice. how bad it is. Which is it nice because nice. I, I like seeing that because I don't want to just support a guy because he's a guy. And I don't think we, you should just support a woman because she's a woman. Yeah. So yeah. let's go. Let's play some more here. This is so exhausting watching this that uh, you might need a consultation. And if you need a consultation from me, hit me at DanteNero.com. Click on consult. You can get me and kind of vent this out. That's right. And if you want a consultation from me, you can email me at advicefromharry at gmail.com and we can talk about how to fix your relationship and how to avoid all these toxic, awful situations. Oh, relationship and you're kind of just pulling at that person to be something for mm -hmm. you. You refuse to see mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. And so we had to go our separate ways mm -hmm. to really look at ourselves and see the blocks that we had in order to find a way back. One part that... Okay, I'm sorry. This is all nonsense. This is like verbal Gosh. gymnastics. And Hoda has to sit there. This th The only thing I can equate this to... Deepak it, Chopra. Uh, no, even worse. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's rough too. Yeah, I hate Deepak. Where he just does the uh, the universe. You are one with the universe. And yeah, the most, uh, the is, cosmological universe yeah. in the most... You're like, how does that help me, uh, Deepak? Mm -hmm. uh, hold on. It's when... The only, this is like such verbal gymnastics and such insanity and Hoda has to sit there and pretend that this is this is making sense. The only thing I can equate it to was when Diane Sawyer sat down with Charles Manson uh -huh. and 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 she had to sit there and listen to his insanity. Uh -huh. uh, like here, here, I, I pulled it up. Oh, my God. You're the best. Well, whatever that means. Sure. He's crazy. He's mad as a hatter. What difference does it make? You know, a long time ago, being crazy meant something. Nowadays, everybody's crazy. So, I mean, you know, like, you know, synonymous. I mean, it's an irony, man. It's a paradox. I mean, are you crazy? <laughs> yeah. Where's your black gloves? <laughs> you got your rings. You think I don't understand your blue rings and your yellow best skin? You think you're anything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you're behind that. Yeah, <laughs> now, this Tupac. Is, this <laughs> Tupac was my soulmate. Yeah, yeah, yeah man. This is another thing. This goes to show you how, how, how you know, because you know he actually conned women and Manson conned women into killing people for him. This is how, uh, how you guys pay attention. This is how important confidence is. <laughs> when you can say that trash that he said, who I have no idea, but you say it with enough, you say it with your chest, you say it with your ten toes down. Shout out to Kyle Grooms, ten toes down. You could they'd be like, you know what? He's got a point. That guy is. <laughs> that guy is. He, he, he something about he's just so he's just so innovative. But mm. let's go. Yeah. Let's uh yeah, let's get let's do some more of the uh our current day Charles Manson <laughs> Jada Pinkett Smith. <laughs> With you and it was very touching to me that you'd gone through it, but you talked about 
the idea that you were maybe going to kill yourself. Yeah. That you felt like you were not, your kids would have been better off. Will would have been better off. Everyone would have been better off without you. Yeah. What did your kids think when they saw that part of your story told in that way? Um, well, I've talked to them about it. Like, so they know. I, yeah, they knew. <laughs> that, yeah, yeah I did, you know, they knew before um, the interview came out. But I was talking to my mother the other day, and everybody knew that I was very unhappy, mm-hmm. but just couldn't figure out why. Because everybody thought how I thought. You've got everything. What is wrong with you? Because I didn't know what was wrong with me either. Because you have to remember, during that time, no one was really talking about mental health. Yeah. And so we just did. I didn't understand, and nobody around me understood. The other thing people asked me was, you talked about how you you were at the brink, and then something, you, you took something, and it changed you. And it was ayahuasca. Yeah. For you. Ayahuasca really was... That that was the turning mm. point. So you didn't take that enough. in and of itself mm-hmm. turned you from on from the brink of brink suicide. suicide. And I never had a suicidal thought again. Now, in saying that, ayahuasca is not for everybody. Yeah. And I want to be very clear yeah. about that. You have to really have <laughs> someone who's very mm-hmm. trained to, mm-hmm. to guide you through that. Um, it was a very extreme yeah, you know, situation for me. But I swear, I'm so grateful that I went through it because in yeah. four days, uh-huh. I have four excruciating nights. But on the other side, I never. And you never had a suicidal thought since then. Never. Um, you, the title of we your did. book is <laughs> Worthy. We had and you, plenty. So today, as we sit here on this couch, I feel worthy. worthy. Tell me. Yeah, I just feel so good. I've been through so much, you know, yeah. and. When you can really look at your life and we think that life is supposed to be perfect. And when Uh life isn't perfect, we feel like, oh, then I'm not worthy. Then something's wrong with me. And that's not what it's about. Uh -uh. We get challenged with with life in order to keep building our self-worth, to keep finding Uh our greatness, Mm -hmm. you know. And so that's what the book is about. It's about that journey. If you find another mm. great love, pump that book, finds, baby. Pump that another book. Great love. Mm. There's no finding another. Hold, hold on. Oh, 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 one second. Oh, sure? oh, one second. <laughs> Sorry about that. Went right, to Char- went right to Charlie, but I wanted to stop this for a second. Um, just the uh, that's what this book is about. Um, okay, your journey. Uh, which part of that involves Will Smith and Tupac and? you know, separating yourself from your husband. It's it's not about that. You, you're just using the word journey to justify everything. Oh, everything is a journey. It's a journey. Yeah, that is. It, it just takes away accountability. Like, well, you know, uh, everything happens for a reason. Yeah, it happens because you're awful and you don't give a shit about other people. You talked about dope fiend ways. These are dope fiend yeah. ways. Doing yeah, this, yeah. just justifying what you do in spite of how it hurts people just to get what you want. That's that's a dope fiend way. It really is. The way she's talking, I I keep feeling uh maybe you could put this in post. <laughs> just just here comes the sun, little Dude. darling. No. It's it's me all right. Uh, yeah. da, da, da. Because it, this is like such this is such, such a epiphany. different video yeah. from when she did the interview. Yeah. It's like everything that she said the, in the video, the first video as uh, now it's all it all clear to her. You know what happened? Her publicist was was like, "Look, you ain't gonna work ever if you don't clean right. this up." You and gotta I'm, fix this. And mess. I'm gonna tell you something: the internet lasts forever. You may never work again. You're not you're not talented enough to to warrant that people have to fuck with you. Not only that, people don't want to fuck with you now your your image people are not happy to see you now yeah because you're such a caustic human being this this unnecessary smear campaign against your own husband yeah is insane a guy you know and again we do blame will smith on this he sticks around but at some point you know why why do this again why why release this book why do this memoir why go back to the today show like she just because there's egotism there, and that's yeah. also, you know, uh, perpetuated by whoever her team is, the yeah. industry telling her this is a good idea, or she's we not gotta, listening to them. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta damage, damage control, damage the, yeah. control. But Go back and- the damage control is is sending Jada out to just, and she, in her head, her delusional head, she just keeps changing the narrative, and it, we're the weirdos. And the other, the other, th- the other thing about this, what's interesting about this is that. 
how crazy are them kids? You know what I mean? Like how there's no way in the in the world that those kids are not emotionally have some serious, serious emotional problems. This is why you say to people, start listening. If you can't be respectful to each other, end the marriage. I mean, I people say stay in it, stay in it. I don't agree with that because what you what will happen is you will teach your son. You will teach it. Will is teaching mm. his son to be a bitch like him, and he's teach and she's teaching her daughter to be an awful human being like that because her she is Jada is the epitome of what womanhood is to her. Like uh, her Willow is going to see this is what a woman is, and 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 Jaden will be like this is what a man is, and this is how the dynamic of this is the way that we should. This is the how we 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 perpetuate relationships. So they got they got years and years of therapy so that they don't read the, repeat this shit. Your kids don't listen to what you do. They watch what you do. They don't listen to what you say. They watch what you do. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. I, I can't argue here. Let's go back to the insanity. That journey. If you find another great love or if Will finds <clears throat> another great love. There's no finding another great love. And I think that's the point. It's but like we are in a place now that we are in a deep healing space. And we are really concentrating on healing the relationship between us. So. It may not be the divorce on paper anymore? There's no divorce on paper. I mean, not on paper. There might not be a divorce in theory anymore. Yeah, no. We really have been working hard. Wow, that's interesting because that's, again, a, a different tone from oh. last week. We're working hard. We're, we're healing our love, this and that. You, when you did that sit-down interview, none of that was there. Why? Why? Because now you have, to do, you have to do a reversal because you are being smeared and destroyed your reputation is ruined, so now she changes the narrative because she's a selfish human being. The, the, this is why nobody watches television anymore because this is so produced. She has, her hair is white. She's wearing all white. She's on a white couch. It's like the, the this revelation of the fact she's coming out of the storm. It's all this shit, but nobody believes it. This is why people fuck with creators youtube creators and stuff because there's an authenticity there's an yeah. authenticity that happens that when we're sitting in or with your mic in your bedroom or your living room or your studio or whatever you you you're honest people people elevate and they and they they want the honesty of humanity no there's How, a lot of favoritism being played they have yeah. to the, first of all they want will smith right so you can't yeah. piss off because she's connected this is another thing where yeah. she is attached and connected to will smith so if they want to have will smith the next time will smith is doing a, a media campaign they can't shit on his now current wife yeah. right so they have to tolerate her nonsense as a favor to will Mm -hmm. uh, and she doesn't understand that or doesn't seem to care or so, she didn't and now she does after she left that interview and they were like, look, bitch, you better, yeah. you better clean this up. Go get you a, a, a manure shovel and a dustpan mm -hmm. and go clean this up. Put your white sweater on and your white, your little boy pants, your little white boy <laughs> pants, your knickers, and you go out and uh, say some nice shit and smile. Put your little Cisco hair on and fucking and, clean this shit up, this shit show up. Yes. And now that she has to clean it up, guess what? Her and Will are back. They're on good terms now. It's, in the first never interview, be a, yeah, never be a. There'll never be a, a, a another love. Another we work, we're she, in a healing space. Yeah, the way she snaps on Hoda, like Hoda's an asshole for suggesting <laughs> that. Even though, you, because you told her, this is the type of thing. This is what you told me last week. You told me that you were living separate lives, right? And now I'm an asshole for assuming that. Look at this keep building our self-worth to keep finding uh, our greatness so, mm -hmm. you know so and so that's what the book is about it's about mm -hmm. that journey mm -hmm. back if to the book find another great love or if will finds <clears throat> another great love there's no finding another great love and i think that's the point it's but, like we are in anger. a place now mm -hmm. that we are in that a deep suggest. healing space mm -hmm. and we are really concentrating on healing the relationship between us. So oh, there's a relationship it, now. We didn't know that. I thought they were leading separate lives since 2016. Yeah. It may not be the divorce on paper anymore. There's no divorce on paper. I mean, not on paper. There might not be a divorce in theory anymore. Yeah, no, we really have been working hard. Oh, 
See? Okay. Yes, well, I didn't know that. The we might get... I was trying to think. Well, I... Wait, 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 wait. I totally missed that on the whole thing. That's wait. the whole thing. So, wait. So, you totally missed that. See how she passes the boat? You totally missed that. Like it's like it's Hoda's mm -hmm. fault, like it's the producer's fault. You totally missed that in the four to six hours where I only mentioned how Will and Will and I are separate and not a unit anymore. Somehow you're an asshole. Uh, now put this white turtleneck that we got from the uh, Academy of Private Boys School. Oh, geez. and go out. <laughs> Let's see it. Yeah, it does look like she's a, a medic on a, a future Starship Enterprise. <laughs> she's the, you know how they say voluptuous oh, she's boy. venumptuous but no, okay <laughs> well put a put a turtleneck on it how much it how much you think they paid at kinko's for that jada pinkett smith sign how, oh, how much Jesus. You, what do you think it's worth on the open market <laughs> i mean if you if you cut it up i guess or spray paint it nwo <laughs> style yeah it might be worth something let's see here I, I mean this is insane the way she's going after like hoda's crazy this is what this is what toxic people do. They make you think that you're crazy. This is quintessential gaslighting. Yeah. Well, I never said all that. I never did that. You, you missed mi you, it. You missed it. That was the whole point. Wait. Mm. We are in a place now that we are in a deep healing space. And we are really concentrating on healing the relationship between us. So... It may not be the divorce on paper anymore? There's no divorce on paper. I mean, not on paper. There might not be a divorce in theory anymore? Yeah, no. We really have been working hard. Oh. Mm. See? Okay. Yes, well, I didn't know that. that. We the might whole I was trying to take. Well, I, wait, wait, wait. I totally missed that on the whole thing. That's wait. the whole thing. So, wait. So, wait. Just so I'm 100% clear. You were divorced, not on right. paper. But now we might be a point where we're back together. We are working very hard. At bringing our relation, yes, bringing our relationship together, back, back to a marriage again, back to a life partnership. Ship. Yes, because okay. here's the thing about Tell me. husband, wife, marriage for me, yeah, for yeah, my healing yeah. process. Mm -hmm. I came yeah. into that with very specific ideas, right? Very specific ideas that were blocks. To me, just seeing yeah. Will as who he is. Yeah. He can't be this perfect, idealized yeah. husband. Yes. Yes, of course I not. have to be able to accept him for the human that he is. He yes, accepts me you. for the human that I am. Mm. And we want to love each other there. Okay. So you might, like, live in the same house and have this. Yeah. Okay. Well, Hold it. That's it's the another only part. That's the well, only part in the special well, that I felt like got okay. lost. Well, guess oh, what? Oh, it is found. We found <laughs> it today. We found it today. Jada, thank you so much. Oh, I, I hate when she's laughing. And he trash. He takes me for the trash that I am. He yeah. accepts me for the funky asshole that I am. Thank God. Mm. Oh, <laughs> God. <laughs> 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 ha 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 
I'm definitely check this one. Uh, out. I mean, how how crazy? Uh, we said it would happen. We called it. Yeah. We called it. We said she would change the narrative, and this is what this is what happens, man. This is what happens. And here's the thing: I honestly believe that Will will give this another chance because he's so beaten. He's so beaten. All he this his validation, the validation for his life is in her acceptance. And he will put up with this shit. He may, he may get out. Well, you know what? I don't even think. I, call me Will. Yeah. Call me Will. If you need help, Will, use I'll a consultation. Boy. DanteNero.com. Click on consult. You need a consultation. Or if I'm not available, hit Harry up. That's right. Email me at advicefromharry at gmail.com. We'll help you out, Will Smith. We'll solve this immediately. We, There's no I reason. call her a funky asshole every sentence. I won't, that'll be my pronoun. That's her pronoun, funky asshole. What a bitch. God damn. Never ending. It doesn't end, man. It doesn't end. This is the battle you fight. Well, um, I hope we've helped people uh, at the very least. If not, we have fun trashing this funky asshole. So, I mean, isn't that what it is? It's a header. What difference does it make? You know, a long time ago, being crazy meant something. Nowadays, everybody's crazy. So, I mean, you know, <laughs> like, you know, synonymous. I mean, it's an irony, man. It's a pair of ducks. I mean, are you crazy? Damn. Thank Fun you, Jay. fact, they got the same light. They got the same laugh. Fun. Oh, that's true. Yeah. That is true. <laughs> My God, uh, Hoda, I don't get where you're. Hey, where are you a duck? Where you wearing a black car? Right, where are your gloves at? <laughs> Listen, if you want to avoid all these type of situations, if you want to get better, follow Man School 202. Subscribe below. We're, we're showing you how to avoid this type of of stuff and get out of these toxic relationships so you can be happy and be a better person so yeah. please and also the patreon if you want to subscribe we do more stuff over there patreon.com slash man school 202 that's where we do all the bonus content for this show uh and we also have all the archived episodes are going up on patreon.com slash man school 202 gybb get your balls back wwdd what would dante do the sexual revolution is being podcast we are out. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't.